Hello and welcome back to a new episode. Today we will be looking at Crimium the Mutable. He's a full white, blue and black, 7-7 seven, seven big dragon boy. He's got flash, the spell can't be counted, and he's got fly. And he has a unique ability, discard a card. Until end of turn, Chromium the Mutable becomes a human with base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Loses all abilities and gains hexproof. It can't be blocked this turn. So there's a couple of strange ways you can build the deck. Um, notice it says it can't be blocked this turn if it is the human. So you could make a Voltron deck, so load it with loads of equipment and swing in. Issue with that is it's 7 mana to do that, so it's kind of slow. And if you have all the equipments on him and then someone goes, you sacrifice a creature, and he's your only creature out, then you're pretty much doomed. So I've gone for more of a control route. So let's see some of the cards that make it uh, quite an effective control deck. So you've got the usual two mana counter slots like Tails End, which can, for two mana, counter an activated ability, triggered ability, or legendary spell. So this counters opponents' generals, really useful. You've got Negate, which is fantastic at just getting rid of any non-creature spell. As some of you might be asking why counter spell isn't in the deck. Um, I try to in include fewer cards that rely on too many pips. And because counter spells are blue blue spell, it's surprising how often actually that pops up. Not having access to all of your color pips in the three color deck is a bit of a nightmare. So I've gone for cards that do have double pips in more slightly more expensive slots because early you kind of want to hit the two mana spells earlier. And you can see by the lands there's a lot of expensive rare lands in here, and they all tr most of them come in. Um, Tap. So, you know, you're not really going to have much time to get out the early spells on curve. So once we start getting to three months slots, we're looking at really powerful cards like Phyrexian Arena, which is just probably one of the best cards in the deck, just able to draw you cards over and over again at the cost of one life. Symmetry Illuminator, which is really proving itself to me um, in literally every blue deck, you can shove this in. Where it's a 2-3 fly for three, when it comes in exile, a card from a graveyard. Also when it attacks, you can do that. You may look at the top card of your library at any time, and once each turn, including your opponent's turn, you may cast a spell from the top of your library if it shares a card type with a card exiled with Cemetery Illuminator. So not only is this a good way to stop recursion decks, like I'm seeing a lot of Croxer and Chainer decks lately, so this is good to stop those, but it's a good way of just cheating out cards on top of your deck, essentially. Super helpful. And that takes me to Bellus Citadel, which is similar effect to the Cemetery Illuminator. So in this deck, we're running the Bellus Citadel plus the Etherflux Reservoir combo. It's not really a combo as such, because you do need to have enough life to get all the spells out. So Citadel lets you cast spells at the top of your deck by paying life. If you look at Aetherflux Reservoir, whenever you cast a spell, you gain one life for each spell you've cast this turn. So let's say you know, you've cast a Duress, you gain one life. Then you cast a Negate, you'll gain two life, so on and so forth. But the beauty is, if you've got Citadel and the Aetherflux Reservoir out, eventually you're going to meet... Uh, you're going to get even and you're going to start gaining more life than the spells you've um, cast. So that's insane. Once you get to 50 life, you can shoot someone down. Pretty cool. It's pretty hard to get this going, but if, you, um, if you're if you lucky enough to get lots of spells and then you're lucky enough to hit the tendrils of Agling on top, you can pretty much kill your opponent as long as you've cast enough spells. So it deals two, dam two life, sorry. Your opponent loses two life and you gain two life, but it's got Storm, so you copy this for each spell you've cast before it. This plus the Reservoir and the Citadel, pretty awesome way to win the game, uh, pretty hard. I do like jumping through hoops. If you want to get these cards a few turns earlier, you can go for Search for Glory, which searches for a Snow Permanent, a Legendary or Saga, so you can use it to search for the Citadel. And um, we've also got the Grim Tutor to get you there a little bit faster as well. So the full deck list will be in the description below, so check that out. See some of my other decks as well if you want to. And if you like the look of the deck and the following gameplay, don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. I appreciate everyone who does that. So let's get into some games. A bonus goes first with a Lonus Cryptozoologist. So there'll be a Simic value shell. Starting hand is not too bad. I've got my favourite card in the whole world, but it's a Citadel. So. And we can't even cast it, which is fantastic. Cool. So let's go for the Glacial Flood Plane for now. We've got the Swords, which will be good to get rid of the General. But we also have the Wrath of God, so maybe... Maybe we can hold off a bit. 
Yeah, because see, we've got the Wrath of God, so I'm I'd, I'm happy to wait a bit. Hopefully, they can't counter it. Inspiring statuary. That's very comboy. Non-artifact spells have improvised, so their creatures come down for cheaper for each artifact they tap. Yeah, I'm I'm vetoing that. That's that smells that smells a bit funny to me. It's like it's like an old yogurt in the fridge. You think, oh, I've had that a while. Maybe I should chuck it out. Okay, and did we pay for this? No, it comes in tapped. And then, yeah, we'll pass to them. We do need a land f for the Wrath of God, so Omen of the Sea is preferable here. Reverse Engineer, draw. Yeah. Draw three, that's powerful. Improvise your artifacts, can't you? Wow, that's freaking awesome in that deck. So let's go for the Omen. Hopefully we hit some lands on top. We'll go for the island, don't worry about the negate for now. Yeah, I'm not going to Wrath of God yet. I still want them to load the field a bit more. This crab looks epic. Especially for a 0 3. How, how small is this crab? To have not any power. If that, tell you what, if that was the size of a 50 pence piece, that would still hurt. I'll tell you that. Okay, so they're going to have five mana to adapt. So for now, let's go for the Faithful Mending. Filter our hand a bit. What? So they're doing this in response. Okay. Sure. <laughs> and then maybe counter it or something? Okay. Ooh, some nice things. Maybe we can get rid of the swords... And the brazen borrower then, because we've got a couple of board wipes, which is pretty decent here. Um, yeah, let's wrath of god now. They might have a counter, which is fine, because next turn we can go for the scriptures. See, that was a good hit because we got rid of an extra three mana. And next turn, if I've got the balls, I could even just go for Citadel. Lotus, do they back it up? Please tap out. Oh, delightful. Let me guess. Oh, let me guess. You're going to go for flipping... Not Crater Hoof. Please not Crater Hoof. This is... This is silly now. Coma. Right. Coma's not any better, to be honest. So... Go for the scriptures now, then. I see they're silly enough to play into this. I've, I think, two times today in testing, I've actually played this out onto a field of like one or two creatures. The opponent still slams down creatures. It's quite funny. So Coma still comes out. Obviously, they can make Coma indestructible, but they're gonna lose the other two. See, the thing is, I've got the other three borns. So I'm not even that bothered. I don't know if I would want to play into that. What do you guys think? What why do people play into this? I don't think people read this card, to be perfectly honest. So if we get stage three of Elders Reborn, we are so stealing that coma. See what I mean? Opponent goes first with Omnath Team of Elementals, I'm guessing. I have made this deck on my channel, so check it out if you want to see my interpretation of this one. Really powerful. Cares about Elementals. Deals damage. Draws cards. What more do you want? Starting in is actually okay because of the Gift of Estates, and especially because we're going second. So they probably have more lands than us. Uh, we do want... Tell you what, we don't want lands just yet because we're going to get them with gift anyway, so... Ranger gets a land, puts it into their hand. Really cool artwork there. Quite classic magic artwork. 
Beautiful. And let's go for plane so we can hold up some negate spell or the brazen borrower. See what they go for. Do they have a three drop? Crucible. Um, let's bounce that to the hand. Okay, now we can go for the gift because I have more lands on us. Let's go for some special lands here. Farmland. Sweet. And we have to discard a card. Let's go for the planes there. So Crucible of Worlds does worry me because if they've got ways to destroy lands, that's going to be a nightmare. Omnath getting one to us, okay. So what should we do? I guess we can go for some blockage here. So many lands here. We do need some action at some point. We've only actually got a negate in a midnight clock to really push anything through. Migration path, so they'll be able to put a few counters on the Omnath, so they'll be able to attack through the Faith-bound Judge. That's a shame. So we'll be taking five, because we don't want to lose the 4-4. Four, four. Authority, that could be nice. Let's go for the Midnight Clock. Got three mana open. So yeah, we can leave up the negate as well. So that might be nice to stop one of the powerful spells, like the Crucible, I think we definitely want to try and counter. Good news is if we do lose the Faith Band Judge, we can recast it from the graveyard using a Disturb Cast. Cavalier of Thorns. Okay, that's certainly powerful. Get a bit of life. Pact of Negation in the deck. Coma and the Thorn Mammoth. Whoa, so we're dealing with a pretty high power attack here, which is a shame. Not sure if we're going to be able to handle all this. We need, we definitely need an exile effect with the Cavalier. Uh, yeah, I'm going to block it. And yeah, let's cycle this to get something. Maybe a board wipe would be great. Fingers crossed. Teferi doesn't quite cut it there. Extinction event. So, 5, 4, 2. 5 odds. Mm. I, I don't feel like that's a good enough hit yet. So, let's go for the Disturb on this. So, we can stay alive long enough, then we could potentially win the game. Okay, um, I'm not sure if that worked or not. So they, they went for Heroic Intervention there. But if you hover over the Sinner's Judgment, I'm interested in the ruling of this card. So Enchant Play, does that target or not? Not sure. It does show that it's linked to the player, but... It doesn't say enchant target play, does it? Curious. Well, we'll, we'll see in, in our upkeep what happens. <clears throat> We're going to take a huge hit here. 14, down to 6. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna sting. So it looks like Sinner's Judgment still works. Yeah, it didn't target, did it? Obviously. Ooh, fantastic. So 
Go for odds. Very nice. And so we could pay two life to make them not draw a card. But I don't really want to, so let's just exile this so they draw a card, but oh well, this is the way it is. But, tell you what we can do. We will pay two just to keep the negate up. We just need to delay a little bit longer. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're going to get a lot of life here. Back to 12. So now Phylath can start putting counters on their things. Holy moly, that's scary actually, okay. That is scary. Are we going to get to negate something here? So we just have to last one more turn, right? Because if we get a third counter on that. Oh, set of the wreckage. Let's see, we can pull this off then. We just need to have patience. So we've got settle and negate. They're going to need two counter spells to get through. Eight, nine. So even if we did just flash the chromium in, we could still survive technically. Finale of Devastation. So I guess they're going for the... Um... So it doesn't really matter, does it, which one we negate? Because even if they just have... Okay, so this... it didn't lag there. So let's hope that they don't have a spell pierce or anything. Although we can still pay two for the spell pierce. Sweet. And yeah, we win in our upkeep. So yeah. Learn something new there. That does not target. Awesome. We go first against old stick fingers. This is a fantastic hand to face stick fingers because they're going to be a graveyard deck with Golgari stuff. And we've got the Elspeth's Nightmare, which stage 3 exiles the opponent's graveyard, which is really handy. I've tried to include quite a few sagas in the deck. I think there's about 8 or 9. Just because you want to be hitting a lot of value in a control deck like this. Because Chromium is a strange control finisher because it comes in with absolutely no value. If you spend 7 mana to get this dude out and he dies, you've just literally wasted your turn. So it feels terrible doing that. So let's go for the chapel here. So we have access to three mana on turn three. Reclusive Taxidermist. Not seen this one before. Two mana ramp creature. Pretty cool. Awesome art as well. So what could we do? We go for the black here and then go for the Elspeth Nightmare, I think. Yeah, we'll take them off some ramp. Now because I've got the Umori the Collector, each creature... Oh, sorry, each non card in the starting deck ha shares a card type. So it's a completely creature deck, which is very interesting. Almost like a dredgy build. So let's check out the hand. We're not going to get anything with this, I guess. Yeah, it's a shame. So they've got Chupacabra. So once we get to exile their graveyard, that's going to be fantastic. What do we want to do? So Forsake the Worldly, also useless because they've got no artifacts or enchantments. That's a shame. Uh, mill 3, return a land. Not sure what to do. Slightly thrown off. We could go for the Defender, but they will just kill it with the Ravenous Chupacabra. So perhaps it's just better to go for the Sign in Blood here. Sweet, okay. And then we also can go for the Arcane Signet. So we are getting a decent amount of mana in which to cast the Chromium. So this could be... Uh, a good finisher versus this deck. If they've only got stuff like Chupacabra, we can essentially just give our Chromium Hexproof. Okay, so they have Selvala now, which means whenever a player plays the strongest creature, they'll draw a card. They add mana equal to the highest power they have. So this is a scary card. Four, five, six mana they're going to have in their turn. Tempted to let them just have it. And then we can go for the Day of Judgment the following turn. So let's just see what we 
cycle here with the Forsake the Worldly. Kaya, fantastic versus that deck. Yeah, I think we're just gonna. Do we cast Kaya? See, if we cast Kaya here, then. They probably won't get to attack it. Okay, let's just. It's a bit of a gambit, this is. I like a good fight. Notice I didn't say fair. Oh, I'm sorry. So they can spend their entire turn killing the Kaya, but that will mean they can't go for their. Okay, so they spend the whole turn doing that. Fair enough. You better watch your back from here on. Interesting. So I've learned my lesson there. Planeswalkers always get killed regardless. But they chose to go for the suboptimal play. Interesting. Just to get the old stick fingers out. Okay. So now I definitely want to go for Day of Judgment. Either way. And then I think we're going to omen here just in case we get a land drop. Dark Ritual and Divine Purge. Yeah, I'm not bothered about those because they've got some really huge cards in their hand. Having access to these Exile effects is going to be superb. Old Stick Fingers again. Okay. Shieldred. So I wonder. So the good thing about Shieldred in the bin is they possibly won't have any other way to reanimate her, so it could be hard for them now to to get her out and if they did get that out then obviously would be in a lot of trouble question is do we want to go for the citadel here or do we want to go for the chromium so chromium can come out and block the stick fingers which would be good so yeah i think that's decent so we have to be aware they've got the ravenous chupacabra so if we do do this then and we block with chromium it would have six damage marked on it it makes it to a one one which means it then dies so it might be better to just set all the wreckage on the stick fingers <clears throat> obviously we are ramping them into more lands and izoni could be scary as well because she comes out with loads and loads of Insect tokens. Let's scry with the omen and see. See if we get anything else there. So kindred denial could be nice. They're really putting us on our toes here. Every every single turn they're going for something big. So yeah, let's just go for the citadel. This could be a risky move, but eat extinction, sweet hit. Nice synergy though, because now we get to keep this on top of if we want to. So how many lands do they have? I can't actually see. Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so do we want to really keep the dog on top? Not when we do not gonna get anything out of it. Okay, so this sets up our following turn quite nicely. Sir Conrad. Ooh, that's scary, isn't it? Every turn they're playing a terrifying thing. Um, okay. Two and five. So odd and even. That's a real shame. Um, definitely want to get rid of the Sir Conrad. Suppose we could go for the Mari Conjecture. We're going to lose a fair bit of life there. Losing five. But we do get back the Eat to Extinction. And apparently that's enough to uh, win the game. Moving on to the next one then. Opening us first with Tyvar Kell. There's going to be a green black elf deck. And I don't mind the hand because we can counter the Tyvar Kell. And we can also vanishing verse it. So we've got a couple of nice solutions for the problem that we see. Cool sleeves. Raska alternate artwork. Very nice. Right, so they're going to have. Tarva Kel next turn, so we're gonna have to hold two mana up. So Yeah, let's veto it now. It's fine. 
Luckily the opponent hasn't quit. That would have been sad. I do see that quite a lot these days, which is quite annoying. Um, let's tap the correct mana here. And then I'm happy to kill the Paradise Druid as well, just to take them off some mana. It's mean, but it's just, it's gotta be done. Harold unites the elves. Harold is a funny name. It's like in design, they were like, should we go for Harold? And they thought, ah, oh, Harold doesn't sound fantasy enough. Change the O to an A, Harald. Ooh, Etherflux Reservoir, very nice. Just what the doctor ordered. So, let's exile it, I guess. That was pretty lucky for them to have this in the hand. Yeah, this basically revived the Tyler Kel. Cheeky. Not on a try. <laughs> wow, this taps for three green. That's a lot. Okay. So luckily we missed. Well, they missed that section. But putting a counter on each elf. Whatever an elf attacks, creatures get minus one. So we don't want to cast any creatures. Three, four, five. What do we do here? Do we go for Lantern and Mortify? I think so. So that takes them off 8 mana. Well, it would have been 9 potentially as well. So we got really lucky here. We've got lots of land and ramp. Hopefully hopefully they don't have a way to get rid of it all. Our legacy will celebrate us like the gods of How greedy are they? They just don't want to make elves, do they? They just do not want to make a 1-1 one -one elf. Well, that's fine for me. I'm just going to keep eggs on. <laughs> on. They've missed out on three elves here. I reckon if, if I did that, I would have at least gone for at least one elf because the ultimate. What if he cast an elf? Gains haste draw two. I mean, that's a, that is a sick ultimate, to be fair. Okay, semi tree is going off here. Rish car, okay. So, yeah, I'm going to pass a turn because we've got enough mana to flash in the Chromium. So, if they do have a way to kill Chromium, I'm not too bothered because the ECD can revive him. So, we could even block something with Death Touch if they choose uh, Tyvar Kel. Skemfar Shadow Sage. Okay. So we're going to lose some life, gain some life. What's going to happen? So they can make us lose three or they can gain three. So it's like a one way Gary. If you don't know Gary, that's uh, the nickname for Grey Merchant of Ashfidel. Or Asfidel, one of those. No attacks, very wise. Very wise. So we don't get two. We don't get any value off the ECD stage 3. Or, tell you what we could do. Here's some synergy. You'll like this. We'll discard the Skyclave Apparition. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I like that. And then now, we can return it. For free. So cast it for free. Uh, go for counter. And then we can go for the Rishkar. Awesome. Tapping it to draw a card with the Castle Lock Thwain makes sense. Okay. And then I guess we can go for the Ether Flux Reservoir. Cycle this if we get. Maybe we could get something like a Duress or something. Sick, the worldly. And let's swing in. So, not gonna lie, I've been pretty lucky this game. Nine. Other elves get plus one plus one. So annoyingly that does push the what does this do? Enters, choose one, remove counters from a permanent where X is the number of elves. Target creature permanent controls gets minus X. Holy moly, that's, that's pretty good for an uncommon. So they can give Skyclave Apparition minus four. Okay. So we are in a bit of a pickle now. They they are seeming to overwhelm us all of a sudden. 
sure thing. So let's cycle this to see if we can get a board wipe or something. No, okay, so we're just gonna have to pass the turn. I mean, this is not looking good now, unfortunately. It has swung. In one turn, they managed to get. Oh boy. He's only as well. Strangely good in the deck. So it's definitely got graveyard elements. Will they attack or not? We've got some we've used some great cards this game, yeah, but obviously it can turn very quick, can't it? That's just the way it is. So we still take nine, so down to ten. Ouch. And okay, so a spell would be good. Ooh, that's pretty good. Faithful mending. Draw two, discard two. Gain we're gonna gain three life. I don't know why they need to respond. Oh, settle the wreckage. Oh my goodness. Okay. We could be we could be saved, guys. Fingers crossed. Just don't duress me or duress or thought seize, anything like that. Castle Lock Thwain's doing a lot of work over there. Just anything but hand disruption. Icon, okay. I kind of think going for the Tyvar Kel would have been good as well because giving something Death Touch makes me less inclined to block, but. And also it means they can push through 5 damage as well. I feel like this would have been better not knowing the card in my hand. <clears throat> yeah, the Faithful Mending there really helped us. Okay, so. Let's settle the wreckage. They're going to get a ton of lands off this. <clears throat> and we do force the hand a bit because they'll have to use all their mana now to sack a creature to gain a life. And they choose to not do any of that. I suppose they wanted the lands. Um, maybe they wanted to use the icon or draw with the Lothwain. Yeah, I'm, not I'm really not sure because they could have paid two to draw two. Rather than pay three to draw one or pay three to get one. Feed the swarm, blimey. So unfortunately we can't actually protect him. So that is a shame. They do go down to eight though, so they are almost dead from that. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. This castle of Thwain might even kill them. So it costs 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So yeah, we can flash this in end of their turn. And now they can't really use Carth Lock, Lock Thwain because if they do, then we can swing in and kill them potentially. Circle of Dreams Druid. The Zoni will get annoying because it does gain them life. Crater Hoof Behemoth. Oh, this is like the 1500th time I've died to this. Oh, that's so boring. That's such a boring win con, isn't it? Okay, sure. Uh, so, yeah, we can't even survive this. We get to 13. We can... So they've got 16, 25, 25 minus 7... Yeah, still won't be enough. Oh, that's that's annoying. At least kill me a different way. At least kill me with an elf. Fair enough. Sure thing. Moving on to the next game then. We go first against Annalise, the Cinderwind. There will be an is it wizard? Is it wizard build? Stuck hand, there's no blue, got a lot of blue things. Got the swords and Kaya. Still want a mile though, I think I want three or more lands. This is slightly better, I suppose. We've got the signets, we'll keep this. 
Gift of Estate's terrible if you go first. Biomancer. So we ramp now, and that means we can maybe go for the Faithbound Judge. Should be pretty good. Sprite Dragon is scary. Right, this is going to be risky, but I'm not going to play a land. And that way we get to use Gift of Estates. Judge is a pretty sweet blocker, but red, red guys probably have a way to deal enough damage. What does it say? Where well, X is number cards named Ancestor Anger in your graveyard. So this doesn't actually really work in Commander or Historic Brawl. I guess, yeah, okay. Sure thing. Let's go for Gifts. Gift of Estates. Memory lapse. Goodness me. That's definitely the wrong thing to counter. Pro tip guys, don't counter something that just searches for lands. Probably not. You're probably gonna regret it. And Yeah, that's past turn. Faith band judge is getting bigger by the second. Uh, next turn we can attack. So he'll have three counters on him. And then if it dies, we've got the disturb risk factor. Okay, I'll counter that. We also get a card into our hand with the same CMC. Sweet, we get another counter. Well, I, I don't know what to say about that. What can I say? That was quite satisfying because I know how aggressive it is. Oh well. If you enjoyed watching this video, why not try some of my other videos on my channel? And don't forget to support me by hitting the like and subscribe button for more content like this.